Hey guys, it's Thursday morning's devotional, and what I'm looking at today is in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. And so let's just pray and ask God to speak to us because this is a really powerful passage that we need to put into our lives, and it really kind of changes perspective of when you study this. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that not only do we have your book, but we have you, the author, to help us understand it and to put it into our lives. So help us do that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. And so Paul here is speaking to the church at Corinth saying, Hey, in a race... And of course, as you know, um, the Romans love their games, the Greeks love their games, and you know, and, and they, the Olympic Games you know, started in Athens and um, uh, not too far from Corinth. And so here we see that Paul is using that as an illustration, saying, hey, in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the crown. Only one, and they would give them this victory wreath that would symbolize that they, they were the champion. He said, only one gets the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. And then he says, well, everyone who goes into the games goes into strict training because they're trying to get at the highest level of performance. And so they're going to strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And so he's saying that, you know, even in our highest level of sports, professional sports, whatever it may be, you know, football, baseball, uh, track and field, uh, whatever it is, people go into strict training and really uh, do, you know, crazy things in training to try to get to that level, not just so that they can compete, but so they can win, because that's the goal. And he said, in life, that's really the goal. And But life's more important, because what we're doing here is you follow Christ and follow his plan for your life and go all out with all your heart, giving it everything you've got with Christ's power, then you're doing that as something that's going to last forever. You're not doing it as something that's going to just, you know, be gone in an instant because there's nothing here on this earth we can take with us. The only things that last are, you know, God's word and that we put into our lives because the God's word lasts forever. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever and the souls of men and women. And so anytime you follow God with all your heart and and you're, you care about, others around you to meet their needs and to serve and to show them the love of Jesus, to bring them to Christ, then that's going to last forever. And so he says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. He's saying in this Christian walk, that this Christian race, really, I'm running the race to win. Now, it's interesting that it's not a competition against other Christians. It's really just running the race that God has called you to. And that's what scripture talks about, all the scripture that that um, it's the race that's marked out for you. And so every one of us have a certain race marked out for us um, to become all that God has called us to be, to follow God's call with all our hearts. And it looks different from the American dream. It's God's dream for your life. And when you follow God's dream for your life, you know, wholeheartedly, then you're running the race to win. And it's all about, eternal values. Things are going to last forever. And so Paul said, that's what I'm doing because I'm not doing it aimlessly. And sometimes we just live aimlessly. And, you know, we just go through our day and just kind of go through the motions rather than saying, hey, this day is a gift that God wants me to use for his glory. And really seeking God's will for our lives. He says, I'm not a boxer just beating the air, you know, just like, oh, getting a good workout in. But I mean, I'm in a battle and, and what I'm doing is real and it matters. And I want you to know, Christ follower, that when you follow Christ with all your heart, what you're doing really matters. It matters for eternity and, and you're working as unto the Lord. Whatever job you have, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you work for the Lord God, knowing that God can use you at your job, that God can use you in your home, that God can use you in your neighborhood for his glory to be a messenger of Christ's love and and it matters for all eternity. I always say what we do at Woodland Church, you know, eternal destinies are at stake each and every weekend that I preach. And I feel that responsibility and that pushes me to my knees and only God can change lives. But it's a serious thing 
that what we do at Woodland Church every time we greet someone, every time we um, you know serve in the nursery or the preschool, the children's ministry, um, it matters for all eternity. Because what we're doing is we're being a part of God's plan to change lives and eternal destinies are always at stake. And so we wanna run the race to win the race marked out for us, to follow not someone else's race, not to copy someone else's race, but follow a race marked out for me, that God has for me. And when you get caught up in worrying about everyone else's race and what everyone else is doing, then you're gonna miss out on God's purpose for you. And then Paul goes on to say, so I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. I strike a blow to my body. Isn't that amazing? And make it my slave. What he's saying is we have flesh that, that as Christ follows, we're a new creation on the inside. Your heart, um, who, your core of who you are is new. You're a new creation, totally forgiven, justified by God. And you desire to do God's will and follow God. And you desire to follow life and not fall back into death. But we still have our flesh and our flesh craves what it craves. You know, and, and it, the things that our flesh craves aren't good for us. And he's saying that, so what I have to do, just like any athlete has to, has to really discipline their body to do things that their body doesn't want to do. Their body just wants to lay around and, and their body just wants to eat junk food. Their body, you know, and, and so what, what I have to do is buff my body. If I'm just going to be an athlete in, uh, you know, any sport, but we're doing something so much more important. So why should we let our flesh get in the way of uh, what God wants to do in our lives? And that's so powerful to me because that's really what it comes down to. It's understanding that our flesh, you know, uh, just wants to gratify itself. And in doing that, it causes destruction in our lives and the lives of others. And um, and Paul said, I'm, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do. And a lot of it is accountability, having someone um, I have an accountability partner, um, and um, we meet every week, and uh, he asks me some really tough questions every week, and I have to be really honest with him, and that's so important, and we're doing this with all our pastors, pairing them up in accountability partnerships, and it's just been amazing what it's doing, because if you really want to, you know, you got to have accountability in all the areas of your life, and um, and so that's what we're really seeking to do. And that's what I found because um, when you have no accountability, you have no honesty, when you have no honesty, then basically, um, then you're gonna follow the cravings of your flesh rather than what God wants you to do and what you truly wanna do in your heart. And so I really encourage you, you know, to um, make sure that you get someone that will help you be accountable. Whatever area you're struggling in, whatever area you need to grow in, um, you know, physical, spiritual, relational, all those things. So that's so powerful. But Paul says, man, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm not going to let my flesh control me. I'm going to die to my flesh because um, and my flesh will keep me from God's grace for me. And that's total fulfillment, living for my true self. And so and that's what we want to do. And that's what I'm praying for you today. Live from your true self. Don't let your cravings of your flesh win out. Do whatever you got to do so that they don't and that you do God's will today. That's what fulfillment is all about. God bless you. Run your race today and run it to win.